Yeah, I think the visitor center in Fells Point was really helpful to you, and as I remember, Bladensburg was as well. Yeah, the Battle of Bladensburg Visitor Center helped me out a lot with Joshua Barney, but when I look back at the footage, I really felt like I didn't do them justice because their passion and the whole point of them being there was the Battle of Bladensburg. So when I went back and had the episode re-edited, I really wanted to focus on that. Here, let me show you. This facility here is called the Bladensburg Waterfront Park, and we're part of the Star Spangled Banner Trail that National Parks uh, is, supports. And uh, this goes all the way uh, to Baltimore, uh, up uh, and across into the Eastern Shore. It's primarily a Maryland trail, okay? okay. And what we have here um, in this uh, visitor center is uh, we try to sort of cover the, the War of 1812, okay, and, and in particular, what happened right up the river here. Well, I'm dressed like this to tell the story of late 18th century and early 19th century America, uh, and to uh, tell about the Battle of Bladensburg. Um, you know, the militia at the Battle of Bladensburg were composed of common folk who were obligated to be part of the militia. They were poorly trained, they met once a month, and, um, the, you know, the British could fire three rounds out of this thing in a minute. You know, the Americans are lucky if they get one off in a minute, okay? And it's kind of interesting that um, you, you dress like this, you feel it pulls people in and gets people more interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you can talk about what it was like and demonstrate different things, what people did, it gets their interest, especially children. Whether famous or infamous, the Battle of Bladensburg took place within sight of where we are right now. 200 years ago, this was 40 feet deep. Oh, wow. And ships came up here, and this was a major tobacco port and an inspection port for Maryland for tobacco. The British had not gotten over uh, the loss of the colonies by any means, and had uh, most British uh, military and naval people uh, had a real antipathy uh, towards um, Americans, okay? They got to Bladensburg around one, oh, maybe around 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon. Now this is August, and George Bleig, one of the characters from the 85th, he's a second lieutenant, talks about the heat, and these guys are dressed in their uniform with wool and tight collars, and men are falling out left and right. There's a lot of stragglers, okay. They get to Bladensburg and um, there is 5,000 militia opposing them. Well, unfortunately, those 5,000 men had been marching back and forth because General Widner, he didn't know anything about leading men, okay? It was a political appointment. Right. And so he had heard, oh, they're here, oh, they're there. And so he moved his men. By the time they finally settled in Bladensburg, his men were exhausted, okay? Not only that, when he set up the defensive line, he set it on the other side of the bridge, okay? So they didn't burn the bridge, <laughs> you know? And, and so, I mean, the, the military mistakes are, you know, and also part of Monroe came to the battleground. He moves the second line of defense, which was 50 yards from the first line, he moves it a half mile back. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the end of the far. battle. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, when the British attacked, when they first attacked over the bridge, the Americans fired on them and, and forced them to retreat. But they also had something that really scared the Americans, and that was the Congreve rocket. Now, Congreve rockets, you couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with a Congreve rocket. I mean, you couldn't aim it anywhere. But what it did was so random that it scared the, the militias who were poorly trained, poorly led, and had really never been in battle before. Okay, so here come these rockets, they're making this whistling sound, okay, and they're coming down and you don't know where they're going to land. Okay, so they land here, they land there, and they, when they explode, they kill you. Okay, they do kill you. I mean, they're, yeah. they're effective in that respect, okay? And so the Americans, once the British start employing the Congreve rockets, and the British now proceed forward with vehemence, 
the Americans run. Now, a lot of the, the militia were Baltimore militia. So they were out of their home grounds, okay? okay? And we know what happened when they got to Baltimore and the British got to Baltimore. That was a different yeah. story. The British now just captured the cannons that the Americans were originally using that did stop them at the bridge. They've captured these cannons, they've turned them around, and now they're firing at the Americans. Now they've got artillery, okay? okay. So they get to the second line, the second line dissolves as well. They proceed up Bladensburg Road. They're coming up the hill, and who's at the top of the hill? This absolutely audacious, bold guy by the name of Joshua Barney, who's around 55 at this point, okay? He had a fleet of barges. These barges were between 50 and 75 feet long, and he had been attacking the British just continuously, and finally they box him up in St. Leonard's Creek, and he realizes that he can't get out of the situation. So he burns his ships and then hauls the cannons all the way from down there, all the way to Bladensburg. Okay. Okay. And he sets himself up at the top of a hill. Not only did, did he fire the cannons in, but then he charged the British. He only had 500 men. How many British troops were attacked? Ah, about 4,000. These are sailors who, who know how to fire guns. And they devastate the British. Okay, according to George Glee, the British lost 300 men. Okay, the Americans only lost about 26. The British were shocked, so shocked by this, they withdrew. But on his flanks, there was militia guarding him. And once they fled, the uh, wagon with his supplies fled with the militia. Oh, man. So there went his ammunition. So he told his men, retreat. Now they didn't run, they retreated. And he had been wounded, he had a, a ball in the thigh. So he couldn't move anywhere. When the British get to him, Ross and Cockburn come over to him and they parole him on the spot, saying that if, if the rest of the soldiers had been what, what his troop was, uh, they would have lost the battle. Clearly he said we would have lost. Barney's involvement with the War of 1812 ends with the Battle of Bladensburg. He eventually dies on the thrombosis from the wound in his mm -hmm. thigh. I see what you mean. That has entirely different focus. It comes across as being more interesting and doing more justice to the visitor center. I like it. 